podcast sankalp is just a beginning of a conversation entrepreneurs from all over the world come to india rather than the indian entrepreneur being showcased to the world through sankalp forum we started uh, building a public good platform that uh, can really create a vibrant workable ecosystem for early stage enterprises is the determination to solve the problems that need to be solved we are serving the most discerning customers on the planet the 3 billion uh, that suncalp is focused on are focused on people who are basically have been left behind this kind of summit is critical for us it allows you to look at a much larger market so innovation is definitely important but after the innovation has happened how you reach 3 billion people is more important we are a very very early stage startup and a platform like sankalp global summit 16 is a very very apt platform for us sankalp actually showcases early stage enterprises which is the stage wherein we require the maximum amount of external support or help Individual is not anonymous anymore. For us, Sankalp is just the beginning of a conversation. I, we don't think that platforms can really make the change. Platforms are people for us to get everyone together and have the same conversation. Uh, the real action is really behind the scenes. Um, so for us, getting the conversation started, getting people to focus on right topics and agendas is the first step, right? And that's what Sankalp really is, is for us. Start the conversation and then continue those conversations after Sankalp is long over. and you know come back every year and do a check on what did we do last year in 2009 if you will go back and look at india we, what you would see is uh, the idea of impact investing or early stage or startup india didn't exist uh, we were trying to make investments in uh, companies that were actually trying to make a difference to the life of people coming from the lower strata and at the same time make money you know, that was an unknown concept what we realized is how do you actually reach out to investors government policy makers global audience and attract their attention towards the opportunities in india and uh, at the same time let the indian entrepreneurs present their stories to the world and uh, sankal therefore came up as an idea uh, the probably the hidden idea behind the whole thing was that uh, can we actually showcase india as the global pioneer in this space and those two things are basically what led to creation of sankal through sankal forum we started uh, building a public good platform that uh, can really create a vibrant workable ecosystem for early stage enterprises what we wanted to demonstrate was uh, the belief that social enterprises and entrepreneurship really works on ground and it is an investable asset class so we wanted to catalyze more financing resources and investments into the space and that's the basic premise we started with so according to world health organization in any country 10% of the people have some form of the disability and 1% of them need wheelchair that's a staggering 13 million people in india alone they operate very nicely indoors but they are unusable outdoors specifically on rough terrain which is very prevalent in india there exists an established distribution channel for wheelchairs through which we are planning to take it across to the market you have uh, are taking advantage of established large scale systems there are people already with wheelchairs there are bicycle manufacturers and i think you are very intelligently taking advantage of the scale and the low cost that's available through other systems thank you sir that's a privilege i always say that sankalp is great for getting unlikely people together it's an unlikely alliance um and that's where the next generation of innovation is going to come from when a scientist is sitting and talking to a farmer uh, you know when a venture capitalist is going and meeting a absolutely you know um, designer we need to have those unlikely alliances happen so that's really what the purpose of sankalp is make you know people that you should meet people here that you would have never met anywhere else you wouldn't have a chance to meet actually we are serving the most discerning customers on the planet these are people for whom disposable income is 
limited. And so they're going to be very careful the way that they spend their money. I think that's part of the, the change in what we do here at the Suncalp Forum is try to find these innovators, try to find these entrepreneurs who are trying to bring awesome, great products, great services to the poor. Instead of, if I may dare say, you know, the traditional development paradigm which seems to have accepted you know, poor products for poor people. The three billion uh, that Suncalp is focused on are focused on people who are basically have been left behind largely in the, the economic uh, growth that's happened around the world in the last um, uh, couple decades. And uh, basically there's a new push now to actually see the opportunity of uh, investing to bring products and services, to improve livelihoods at this level on, uh, on a commercial basis, on an on a, on a investable basis. And the result here is, the goal here is to um, both return a good, strong return to investors, um, but also uh, to create impact in the lives of, of low-income populations. The next three billion, uh, why, why is that important? Because you've served the top one or half a billion and you created massive discontinuities in income and well-being that you, capitalism doesn't have a choice. It's saturated, actually. It doesn't have a choice but to reach the next layer of oil under the rock. What is it that all the, all the energy, the excitement, the passion that we hear and we see social entrepreneurs bring in, what is it that we can do with this and how can we leverage it to make sure that the government and the social entrepreneurs can be strong partners to deliver basic services to the poorest of the poor? It's heartwarming uh, to hear that India is becoming the innovation hub for social enterprises. Clearly, we're seeing this happening in a number of sectors. But what could be done in terms of policy and framework to make this into a sector in its own right? Uh, if you think about the United States, uh, what is the future of the U.S. economy? It's very much driven by innovation and by entrepreneurship. So uh, what we needed in the United States, particularly post uh, Great Recession of 2009, was a policy that greatly expanded entrepreneurship regardless of whether it was for-profit, non-profit, or, or, uh, or hybrid. Social entrepreneurship is very new in Malaysia. Um, Prior to Magic, there was not a single government agency or government ministry that focuses on social entrepreneurship. And to give you a context of that, there is 84 over government ministry or agencies focuses on entrepreneurship in Malaysia. For the financing piece to work, you need better enterprises. For, the, for enterprises to be better, you need a whole ecosystem to work around them. And that ecosystem piece almost became an important aspect that we had to, uh, we had to condition our hypothesis around. Just the financing aspect is not going to help. Just capital and talent is not going to help. You actually need institutions that promote entrepreneurship. You need institutions that nurture entrepreneurship. You need different uh, organizations and partner or institutions to come in at different parts of the spectrum in the whole journey of an enterprise. And that ecosystem, unless each partner in each institution knows where it can work best uh, to its fullest capacity, is what, what will ma make a vibrant ecosystem. So that's been a real focus for us. Something that struck me, which a few others are doing, the Tata Group has been an innovator in this too, the fact that you reward failures. Do you want to spend a moment talking about that? Because I think for many of the young innovators here, that may be very interesting that, you know, how do you encourage innovation by even rewarding failures. In fact, we're just going into the final stage of a annual innovation recognition and reward program. A very large number of innovations are destined to fail. And if you do not recognize and allow people to fail, then you're automatically restricting the number of people who will, who will even try and innovate. How do we ensure that people do not fear failure? How do you take away the fear, fear of failure? And this was the very interesting innovation that came about, which was, why don't we actually have one award out of three, which actually rewards failure. So that's the Dare to Try Award, which the Tata Innovista uh, gives out every year. In these past eight years, we have directly worked with about 1,500 enterprises, no, early stage enterprises. These are enterprises that are usually in the first three years of, of being in existence. And that's usually sort of the value of death for them. You know, if, if they cross that first three to five years of their existence, they manage their finances, they manage their capacities and their talent, uh, they'll probably make it to the other side. They'll probably survive for a long time. Sankalp actually showcases early stage enterprises 
which is the stage wherein we require the maximum amount of external support or help, which is the stage where we are still building our products or still testing it out in the field and swimming in uh, unknown waters territories. I met a lot of people here who could support me in that endeavor, who, had, who have 30 years of experience in this space, who could uh, give me the relevant connections or even the most basic guidance, who could tell me what all were the areas that I needed to look out for. Additionally, it gives a validation. So um, after this, if I approach an investor and I tell them that, okay, I was part of the Sankarp showcase, we won there. So, um, it, builds an inherent amount of trust that if a platform such as Sankalp has, who have been showcasing entrepreneurs for almost 10, 12 years now, so if they're doing it for you, then they must have seen something for you. So it validates that uh, for the entrepreneur. Entering a very interesting uh, future, a future where it's going to be volatile, unpredictable. Um, it, it, there's going to be so many changes that's going to happen in all various industries, and no one really knows what the future is going to look like. Jugard, in my personal view, is highly overrated. is a band-aid. It works. It heals. But uh, uh, sustainability of solutions requires a non-Jugard approach. But if Jugard you say as instant creativity to fix a problem for the short term, I'm with it. Innovation in business models using the surfeit of technology that is available whether it's in telecom, computers, devices, electronics, all this coming together with new business models aimed at sectors that are important to these 3 billion people. I think that's the crux. How do you intersect all these together and create viable business models out of it? Jugard, in my personal view, is highly overrated. It cannot be sustainable. Uh, it's something that we like to say and you know make ourselves feel good that Indians are the inventors of Jugard, which is, well, uh, which is true, but it's not uh, something that can be seen as a long-term fix. Jugard, by definition, is a, is a short-term fix. And if you're talking about three billion people, a uh, short-term fix won't get you there. I think what we're seeing in India is, of course, there's lots of quick fixes still going on in India, but there also is some serious innovation going on. An example is we've uh, invested in uh, an India company that is bringing a new breast cancer screening device to market. I have the solution in my hand. Uh, it's a handheld probe that connects to a mobile device to provide breast examinations at the point of care. It really the takes the, the cost down by port, orders of magnitude. Uh, of uh, it's portable, it can be taken anywhere in India, and, uh, it's battery operated, um, and it has efficacy of, of, of technologies that are, that are you know, tens and hundreds of times more expensive. So this is true innovation that is bringing a valuable uh, healthcare service to India that will actually save lives. Hi guys, I'm the co-founder of a crowdfunding platform called Keto. Uh, Keto really is an abbreviation for Key to Tomorrow because- To have a confluence of innovators, like you said, entrepreneurs and investors together uh, in one place is fantastic. And also a lot of the people, a lot of the entrepreneurs and innovators here are, are very new to the business. Uh, to uh, so to put them in touch with investors that have, you know, a lot of experience in the business, is fantastic. Uh, it's a win-win for both. I think it's a win for the investors because you're, you know, interacting with new ideas and new minds, and uh, for uh, for the innovators and the entrepreneurs, you're actually bringing taking the experience of these people that have been around for so long. So I think it's it's fantastic. The ecosystem to support the innovators, I mean, it's there in India. Uh, there's a particularly high concentration now, today, 10 years on. I've been involved in this since 2006 or 7, and I think that we see a fabric now. We see that there is sort of, uh, not only is there a pipeline of entrepreneurs, there is a, essentially a pipeline of supporters and funders at all the stages. India is a leader, I think, in, as a world leader in this regard. There is 
a high quality concentration of super high quality people. The issue though is still extreme fragmentation, uh, a lack of information sharing, and ultimately a lack of collaboration that I think is the responsibility of every single one of us that comes to these types of events. Entering a very interesting uh, future, a future where it's going to be volatile, unpredictable. Um, there, there's going to be so many changes that's going to happen in all various industries, and no one really knows what the future is going to look like. The system that we currently have do not really respond well to a lot of these changes, and also the innovation that's happening. So I think that for um, people to be able to come to a platform like Suncult and really listen to the various uh, innovation that's happening on the ground uh, and learn from it and how we can react to it, whether as a venture capitalist or as a government or as an investor um, or ever as a policymaker it is, is, is really interesting. Um, and, above, uh, and, and on the other side as well, for the innovators to be able to then work with these guys to help them innovate and help them change um, and also help themselves to get to a certain scale that they need so that we can make a world a better place is where it's very interesting. One of the things that's happening is the ecosystem that supported the development of the internet um, and of mobile consumer and other kinds of areas, uh, that some of the same principles and some of the same resources are very applicable to entrepreneurs trying to solve other kinds of problems. So we're starting to see that um, people who have focused historically on uh, things that unserved, underserved markets are now um, realizing that those uh, ecosystem benefits and those ecosystem services can be delivered more broadly uh, and have a big impact. 90% of the innovation that we see in India can't even be called innovation because it's derivative. Uh, there are only 10% good ideas, 90% are, you know, me too ideas. Um, it's a takeoff on already existing uh, stuff. So I think when 90% of it is derivative, people say that why is capital not there? Capital is not there for derivative ideas. Capital is always there for new ideas. Definitely an innovation ecosystem needs to be built. And that's one of the at least efforts that Sankal Forum is trying to you know create. That let's get all the right stakeholders together. Let there be capital providers. Let there be capacity providers. Let there be people who can mentor. Let there be people who can actually you know provide advice. You need everything actually. So that's what we are trying to see if we can create an ecosystem of innovation going in India. Last mile is the biggest challenge known to commerce. Solutions and scalability are um, synonymous. If it's not scalable, it's not a solution. If it's affecting only and impacting only one person, again, it makes you feel good, but it's not sustainable when you're talking about a three billion kind of uh, challenge that one needs to overcome. Innovation, until implemented, is absolutely useless. Idea has no value. Value is in the implementation. And Sankalpa is helping to, to reach those people, to implement it. That is the biggest take-home message, even from the name of Sankalp Summit, that how you will reach 3 billion people. In many cases, it's very hard to scale if you want to do it yourself. And when you're looking at what we are calling the next 3 billion, uh, scaling can really uh, take a lot of time, effort, and money. And a startup usually has limited amounts of all of these. Look for partners. Look for partners, whether they are, uh, whether you get them at the Sankalp Forum or at the Tata Group. Look for partners to help you scale. People who have, and look for people whose objectives are somewhat aligned to yours. Is the, the cost of your finding and acquiring a customer lower than the lifetime value that customer can deliver to you in profit? In a world where you're trying to get to a very large scale, you have to have a path to profitability and when you have constraints on affordability, uh, in other words, prices have to be kept relatively low, you've got to make sure that your cost structure is in line with that. And I think what's happened in the, in the Indian yeah. ecosystem in the last year is there was some exuberance and people forgot about unit economics. Uh, and so you're now seeing some, some uh, backlash in some of the investments. But now there's a re, uh, refocusing on unit economics, which I think is a really good thing. We're looking for the, the business owners and, and entrepreneurs that, that have scalable business models to deliver sanitation to the poor. 
And that may sound obvious, but, but actually it's been really difficult to, uh, to make businesses work uh, in that sector, uh, delivering to low-income communities. One of the benefits, I think, of our coalition in, in working with leaders in business is that um, we have the opportunity to, to not only look at a business model, can it scale, but rather, how do we help it to scale? So we're talking about the ideal of collaborating, but you've actually put it into practice in one of the areas most needed, giving people access to toilets. So how did you do that collaboration piece? It must have been tough. What were the big challenges? So the challenge was that they, uh, it was a taboo. Nobody can say toilets or shit, and it's uh, very embarrassing. So you cannot move the taboo to normal directly. So you have to move the taboo from uh, taboo to media uh, visibility. The media love stories. They're not, they're not so interested in toilets. They're more interested in readership. So if we are able to make it very funny, then you create a lot of readership. And then the politicians say, hey, if I talk toilet, I get into the news. Then the politicians start talking toilets. So once they start talking toilet, the bureaucrats say, hey, I'm going to support my boss. So they start to start programs on toilet. And then the bureau, the, the uh, academia, start to say, hey, I can publish. And then the NGO says, now toilet is uh, fundable. So the, then the donors say, wow, this is a serious problem. I didn't know because in the past, they call, don't call it sanitation. They call it a water issue. So when you call it water, everything go underwater, right? Drown, right? This is an area where return, return will not come immediately. And sometimes if you're truly looking for impact, you also have to subsidize um, one, one part where people cannot, still cannot pay uh, with an area where you are actually uh, generating surpluses to pay for the other, other part. So you need the right kind of inv investors for this. And you know, impact investors are the right kind of investors for this. This is an area which is uh, being sort of championed by Sankal. So for us, the idea was to, um, to go with this ecosystem approach, ecosystem for impact enterprises, um, and, and really leverage our global networks and regional networks to demonstrate that enterprises work, enterprises are investable. If you give them the right ecosystem, the right nurturing and capacity building support, they can build scalable businesses. Uh, uh, they can create jobs as mainstream businesses do, and they can create profits and returns for the investors. Often when you are in innovation process and creating products, the path that you choose can define the rest of your you know, journey. So you have to make sure that you get service, you know, you get help early on in the process. Make sure that you have the right product, do a lot of validation and testing, that there's a market for your product. How you, once you have something ready, how will you get it to masses? I think all those questions have to be answered very early in the process.